back to another episode of Strip by Sia, your podcast for strippers, sex workers, and all the fancy naked people in between. I am your host, Steph Sia. I am a content creator, so I have an OnlyFans and other clip sites that I do. I also am a stripper here in Vancouver, Canada, and I am also or was a former sugar baby way back in the day, <laughs> a long time ago. And I I bring on this podcast every single week because I want to be able to destigmatize sex work and educate the masses in, in my own little way. So <laughs> that's kind of a little bit what I do. We have new episodes every single Sunday and this week is super fun. It's no different than other, any other week. I am bringing on a fantastic guest <laughs> by the name of Cactus Cutie. Say hello. Hello. <laughs> Cactus is an online content creator, photographer, model, podcast host of the Candy Girls Network. And I'm so excited to sit and chat with her today to talk about different types of fetish work that she offers in specifically in, in specific regards to P. So it's going to be a wonderful conversation today. I'm already so excited. There's lots of really cool questions that came in, and I am really excited to get to know her. So Cactus, are you there? I'm here, and I'm happy to be here. Yes. <laughs> I love that. I love that. It's like totally part of her branding, too. I always like see happy. <laughs> I am a slut for puns. <laughs> Me as well, because my name is Steph. Funny. Oh god. <laughs> this episode I'm not gonna like go not I'm, I'm I am smiling from ear to ear right now. I love it. I know. I know. <laughs> We're gonna get along just fine. <laughs> yeah, we are. It's <laughs> gonna be a hell of an episode today. I'm so excited to get to know you. I've only like stalked you online on your Twitter and your website that's being built right now and you have you have so much to say, so I, I'm so excited for you to be here. So thank you, thank you for having me on. Um, well, one of our mutual friends got us together. My website designer, Carly from PS Group. Uh, she's a wonderful human being. Thank you for. So she's been helping me out with this kind of like PR. I guess I'm not going to call it a nightmare. It's just something happening in the media right now. And uh, she has been so, so helpful. Um, I even sent her a draft of my YouTube video yesterday that I'm going to be releasing. And she's kind of helping me like the one that I sent you before this episode. Um, but yeah, so I'm going to be releasing a YouTube video about everything that's happening soon. But I figured I want to talk to somebody else who also understands the sex industry and I, you know, can have a conversation and be able to ask me questions that aren't so stemmed. Like th the reason that I'm here today is because an article wrote something about me that was misinformed because they don't understand sex work and sex workers. Yeah. Yeah. So I'm, I'm very excited to be here and be able to tell kind of quote unquote, my side of the story. Totally. And it's really so important to tell your side and our side as sex workers, because oftentimes our stories don't get told or they get told in a really different light that strays so far from the truth. And it's really infuriating. It's super frustrating. And hearing your story, as we're going to get into it later today, is it just, it just like made my heart sink. Like, just, just like that. And we're going to get into it because it's really, really hard. And, and thank you for being so brave and coming on the show to, to speak about this. But before we get started, um, I know you do a lot of things. I mentioned a few of them, but would you like to give the audience a little intro on yourself in like your own terms? Yes, this is me from my own words. Um, I'm Cactus. I'm a cutie. I love alliteration and puns. Um, I am known as a pea queen. I am a very hairy babe too. Um, I love being outdoors. So what I do with my content is I'm mostly a clip maker. I love, um, I have a background in photography and social media and stuff. So I kind of just tumbled it into my way into being in front of the camera. So, um, I try to make like aesthetically pleasing clips, but also, 
my goal is to put a smile on people's faces. It's mostly, it's not even about the erection. It's not about getting hard. It's not, sure, it's a little bit about making, it's mostly about making money. But uh, the goal that I have behind that, behind just, you know, the object of making, you know, money for rent um, is I really want to make people feel validated, make them feel loved, make them feel not ashamed for something that they like or who they are. And I feel like a lot of sex workers have, um, I guess you can say a more open mind because we are in this industry where there's, I mean, being a sex worker doesn't mean just one thing. Like there's so many niches and, uh, modalities that you could be able to share your content with or to be able to work with somebody one-on-one -on -one or whatever. But I definitely choose. I love clip making. Um, I started off in camming. I occasionally do that sometimes, but I am not really one-on-one. -on -one. I'm more of a performer. I also have a theater background. I did 10 years of improv <laughs> and musical theater. So I'm just like, I want to perform and being uh, in front of us, you know, like my camera is my stage. My fans are my stage. So I, I've been really having fun getting to know my body, um, getting customs that are getting me outside of my comfort zone a little bit and um, creating hairy, pee, fetishy, cute, uh, adorable content that hopefully people love to see. <laughs> yes. And can I just say, like, you just remind me of, like, a real-life, like, Disney character. <laughs> and, like, when you said, like, musical theater, all this stuff, I'm like, oh, my God. Like, you are <laughs> – Oh, do you think I'm a Disney character? <laughs> <laughs> 100 what I was thinking. <laughs> Well, in real life, and I think it's amazing. So, <laughs> so cool. So let's let's get started in terms of like starting in the beginning. And you mentioned your first foray into sex work was with camming. So, do you want to speak to us a little bit about that? Totally. Um, the article also loves to say that I'm a cam girl, even though I don't do it that much anymore. But I started off. My name was Oh Hi Kitty. Um, because I don't know if you've seen the movie, The Room. No. Okay. It's okay. It's a really bad movie. I love bad movies. I love bad horror or not horror. I love bad humor. I love anything that's just like so bad. It's good. So there's like a scene where he goes, oh, hi, doggy. And I just was like, I'm a cat. So why not? Oh, hi, kitty. So I would put on little cat ears and whatever and have theme shows. And I had a lot of fun, but I got burnt out really quickly because I have fibromyalgia and that's also why I'm a clip maker is I can do things on my own time and in the time that I can do it. I mean, a clip is sometimes up to 30 minutes to an hour at most. And then the rest is the time as I'm just sitting on the couch and editing or taking a walk or something instead of being present for, I, I mean, most people do cam shows over two hours. I could only go up to like two to two and a half to like really let my body do that. So um, I did enjoy it, but I think I've really enjoyed getting more into the clip side. That's when I joined, I joined mini vids in 2017. And in 2018 is when I really, really started to like push myself into it, go way more um, full time. I, I was on Patreon for a little bit. I have a, I've had a Snapchat since my camming started. So there's some people who have been on my Snapchat for that long. Um, I'm thankful. I love Snapchat. If I if I could just share all my, it's kind of like TikTok, but things disappear and you can post. It's one of the last places where you can be fully unhinged. Yeah. Like there's oh, there's so much, uh, especially because of SESTA FOSTA and all these bills that are very anti sex worker. It's one of the last places where I can actually post like my butthole or peeing or anything where I don't feel like I'm gonna be censored or lose my account. I don't share links. I'm very careful on there. But um, a lot of my stuff is from Snapchat. And a lot of the content that I actually put on my mini vids and my fansly um, are like compilations of my Snapchat. So it's kind of like oh. a, if you get to watch it, cool. But then you get to rewatch it and rewatch it and rewatch it and, you know, have yeah. a whole compilation for the whole month of. So there's sometimes up to like 30 different types of peas that I do in one video. 
Yeah, so I found my way to be able to create content that works for my body, works for my energy level, and also just works for my happiness. <laughs> I have a feeling we're going to be hearing a lot about that <laughs> later today. No doubt. <laughs> but yeah, no, like, as you mentioned, like, I think a lot of people go into sex work because of the flexibility, because we can make your own schedule. And for people with disability or for people with chronic illnesses, it's a really great way for you to be able to work and for you to support yourself. And a lot of people don't see that. A lot of people have invisible disabilities as well. Um, so I, th I think it's really, really important that we address that and also just allow us to be and, <laughs> and allow us to work because it is just a job, right? So, but that's a really, really interesting way to get into the work. Um, camming is I also tried it a long time ago it was not for me it it was really exhausting to be on like constantly on in that persona it was like wow this is I I, I don't have the energy for this so and to be sitting and waiting for somebody to pay you is such a weird and like sitting in silence sometimes you're just like what do I do with it? it's like Ricky Bobby like what do I do with my hands like <laughs> I gonna do with this time right now <laughs> yeah it's it's um I, I like huge 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 kudos for the people that can do it I have so much respect and appreciation because it really is a skill and you got to be like in the mindset you got to be that kind of personality to do camming so but you know what it, it preps you for so much and I you have to just do things like on the fly and I'm sure your improv helped with that too <laughs> <laughs> the improv definitely helped and I've I, I have a lot of friends who still do cam and do that for like their main thing and I think oh my god you're amazing I could never do that but then they say the same thing to me about what I do and I I, I even commented on your Instagram post today where you did like choreo a choreography with your like stripper heels and like on a pole and stuff and I was like teach me your ways like there's definitely there's so many different like I said there's so many different types of sex work and we all think like oh I wish I could do that or that's not for me but then we're like amazing at other things. So I think it's really cool that we can all either uh, learn something yeah. from something else or learn that something isn't right for us. And that's totally okay too. Jobs and passions can be ever changing. And whether or not the fans want to follow us, that's great. Totally. And like there is literally something for everyone. And we're going to go into the topic of niche fetishes because you are a member of many different communities and different fetishes. But do you want to maybe speak a little bit about hairy community and then we can go into like pee content and piss play and all that stuff too. So let's go into it. Absolutely. I am hairy excited to talk about this. Um, <laughs> so I, I have hairy armpits, I have hairy legs and I have a bush even without the, you know, like hairy arm being any type of hairy besides completely shaved or a tiny landing strip or something really qualifies you as like, quote unquote, other. Mm -hmm. And that's why it's such a niche is because it's you don't see that in mainstream porn, you don't really see hairy people, you don't really see people with hairy armpits in any type of mainstream, not even just porn, like anywhere, it's finally start like some random celebrities may have armpit hair, for a short amount of time. <laughs> but like when Miley Cyrus had like a little thing where she would like diet and whatever. And I was actually kind of inspired a little bit by that. But so I started being hairy like five, six years ago, just on a, I, I saw one of my friends and I, she was actually one of my models. I'm a photographer. Mm -hmm. So I was like, damn, she looks really beautiful with that. And she's owning it and it's confident and it looks amazing. Like why, what I'm, why am I shaving? <laughs> so for No Shave November, the next month, I just figured I'd do it. And then I just never stopped. Wow. So I've only trimmed since then. I love them. The, my armpit hair. I, ne I don't like the feeling of shaving like mm -hmm. I, I especially when it grows back and then it's yeah. like prickly especially on your bush oh it is so <laughs> itchy and it sucks <laughs> and like I it's it's a lot of out of like 
quote unquote laziness, but it's mm-hmm. also because I find it beautiful and because I love being a little bit out of the norm. Like, yeah. why do I have to be this certain type of beauty to be called beautiful? Right. And I think that's the beautiful thing about being a niche content creator is because and I'm pretty much any sex worker could tell you this that and you probably have your own experiences for this too. Um, having your insecurities kind of becoming your money maker in a way like I've hated certain parts not hated but I haven't liked certain parts about myself where there's things that I've been like oh I'm really w- worried if I get into a new relationship or if I meet new people that they're not going to like me because of this but then you realize okay people like your weird feet and they like your tiny titties and they like your hairy armpits and they like you when you're sweaty and like you when you're blowing your nose and burping like that's kind of, it's, it's such a fun way to be able to express a part of yourself, a part of your humanness and not be shamed for it. And that on the other side is people liking it and not being shamed for liking that either. Yeah. So back to Harry, I'm in a community, I guess. Yeah. There's multiple like little communities within the big Harry community, but I, I talk, I talk to a lot of them online and through telegram and we all help each other kind of promote each other and stuff. But specifically I'm part of this, it's called the Harry creator collective and you can go to harrycreatorcollective.com. And I think there's like 20 plus of us in this right now. And we're all Harry babes, all kind of helping each other promote each other and just show like, Hey, if you want to come find some Harry babes, we're all here and we're all wanting to not only be seen, but we want to help you, you know, get to experience part of your fetish and get to know other people. Like instead of being so gatekeepy about who our fans are, it's like, why don't we share them? Why don't we share not just who we are, but share our fans too. So uh, what I really like about these communities is they're so helpful and lovely and some of the most amazing people I've ever met. And it's really nice to meet people like me too. So being in these communities is not only just like, oh yeah, I'm making money. This is fun. It's like, oh, now I have a community of people who are like me and support me and I can support and I feel comfortable to talk to things about. And I can be in my own body, the one that I was created in, the one that I feel beautiful in and share that and feel good about myself. So there's so many good things about being a fetish creator that just like, my heart is so warm. (laughs) And so is the butter. I can feel that. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> well, it's, I mean, that's really, really great because when it comes to fetishes and it comes to niches, sometimes it's really hard to find that representation and to find your people that get you, that are like you creating content, but also finding the people that would really, really appreciate your content. And it's it's hard because like, there literally is something out there for everyone. There really, really is. That rule 37 or 40, you know, whatever the number is. I'm also thinking of movie 34 or whatever. That was a terrible movie. (laughs) But um, there's that rule that's like, if you can think that there's a porn of it, there is. And if there there isn't, there's somebody out there asking for it. And there's somebody out there willing to deliver it. It's just, it's a beautiful symbiotic (laughs) relationship. Totally. And I feel like, I guess, like with, with the Harry content too in the Harry community, uh, what I love about that, and we don't, we haven't really talked about that on the show too much actually, but it's just so natural. The naturalness is really emphasized. It's really celebrated as opposed to, I need to shave everything off and be like completely hairless, uh, like a rat, <laughs> like a hairless rat or a hairless cat or something, right? And like, like that ha- has been the norm for so long, but like it's really refreshing to see people going back to their roots and being like, this is me. And if I can get paid for just being me, like how freaking cool is that? That's the beauty <laughs> about sex workers. Like it's being paid to be you. Obviously there, yeah. you know, I'm cactus. Like that's not my real name. That's not my, this isn't a hundred percent my real personality. There's definitely parts of me that I don't share. And there's parts of me that I love to share. And Cactus is a character. I mean, she's not a hundred percent real, but she's as real as she can get. That's for sure. Without 
sharing too much or, you know, giving away parts of myself that make me feel true to myself. But I feel like there's definitely a lot uh, to be said about being loved for who you are. And that's why I want to, not only do I feel wonderful that way, but God, if somebody wants to tell me that I'm beautiful for the way that I am, like, even though I can't see most of my followers, I'll still be like, oh, I bet you look really good today too. You know, like who doesn't want to yeah. hear that? It's not just about me all the time. Like these people are coming to me for a connection. They're coming to me to be, to feel heard and validated sometimes to get, you know, a uh, well, most of the time to get a boner, but, <laughs> <laughs> but, or to do something with their boner. But I, I, I'm here because I really do feel like people need just to feel some love. And when we're feeling love, we want to give more love. And whether it's to me or whether it's to their family or significant others or whatever it is, as long as we're just passing along kindness and smiles and love, like that's what makes me happy. I love this. Like, oh my God, your vibe is just so like positive and like rainbows and sunshine. And I just, I love it. I just feel like I haven't had interaction with this, with like people like you in a long time. So it's like really genuinely so nice, by the way, really refreshing. (laughs) Thank you. I feel like you, I I feel like um, I am the character. I don't know if you've seen Horton, here's a who, but there's this like little fuzzball called Katie. And she like, she's like, I just want everybody to be friends and I want to poop rainbows and uh, eat butterflies or whatever she says. But it's just, and then she like, goes, ah, and then it's just, I, I, I feel like I'm definitely this rainbows, butterflies kind of vibey person, but like genuinely inside, that's how I feel. Like, I just want people to feel all the rainbows and the butterflies in their stomachs too. And it's really cool. Like I really respect a a lot of my friends are doms or they do more uh, like fetish kind of content that's more like BDSM or um, financial domination or whatever. And I'm just like, you do you. I I respect that. That's not something I do. And that's okay because not all of my fans are going to want that. Not all of people are going to want rainbows and butterflies. I got to accept that too. Some people do not want that. Sometimes they want to be told negative things, but if they want to be told good things, I'm here for that. (laughs) Again, really, really refreshing. Um, And on the line of refreshing, peeing is also really refreshing. It feels really good. (laughs) Kind of love that transition. Um, I wanted to speak a little bit about (laughs) Chef's kiss. You should see chef's kiss. Oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> I would love to know, and I'm sure the, the audience would also love to know how you got into peeing. <laughs> Great question. So I had actually seen when I was first on mini vids and I was trying to see what kind of content I wanted to create, I would actually go on my friends' profiles to see what they created. And this one creator that I stumbled upon just did like this really cute couple pee videos that was just like, oh, I have to pee. And then just like pee. And I'm like, what? I can do that. I can just pee. I can do something that I already do anyways. Let me try this. So I yeah. did like this one video. And I, when I first started out, it was like harder to pee at the beginning, you know, like you're a little nervous. You're like, oh, so it's called Nervous Hiker Peas by Creek. And it's literally just like a minute and a half of me being like, oh, I have to pee. Is anybody around? Um, <laughs> which, of course, there wasn't except for the person who was filming it at the time. But it was um it was really fun to do that. And then from that, I started getting custom requests. I started getting lots of sales on that. And I was like, okay, Uh I'll keep trying this. And my first (laughs) customer request was, and like I started from just peeing by a creek to immediately peeing in my bikini on my floor. Like it went from not a hundred, it didn't go from zero to a hundred, but it went pretty fast. Um, So I was just doing all these things, peeing in different places. I've had Um, a regular who loves to see me pee in different like trash cans and vases and stuff like that. And then there's people who have asked me to pee in my pants, pee my panties, uh, overalls, peeing my overalls is like one of my bigger, it's actually my top selling video is like a me peeing in my overalls. Yeah. 
Um, wow. Yeah, I mean, I look cute in them, but I didn't know that, you know, that was like a, a thing. So I actually have a new custom request that just came in a couple days ago. So I'm going to film a new one. Right but on. what I really love, I'm a hydrated hottie. <laughs> so I have to pee all the time anyway. So it's like, why not? make content and get paid for something I do all the time anyways. But what I really yeah. love about P is that, so not only do I have fibromyalgia, I have something called vaginismus, which is actually a lot more common than people know. I think like one in four or one in six uh, vaginas and vagina havers <laughs> have them. Uh, vaginers. <laughs> I love that. I'm going to start calling that now. Anybody who has a vagina is just a vagina. Um, but uh, vaginismus is the tightening of the pelvic walls, and it happens a lot during sex, penetration, anything. It's uh, Mine is pretty mental, so it happens a lot during moments of stress, that kind of thing. So I don't like to fuck myself all the time, and mm -hmm. that's kind of why I started going into fetishy niche content anyways it's because it doesn't make me feel pressured to do something that I and my body don't want to do um so instead of putting things in my body I take them out of my body <laughs> I share those um and like I said I have to pee all the time anyways actually I do have um a Twitter and an Instagram that I've started it's slowly picking up because I need more people to um send me photos but they're, it's called hydrated hotties <laughs> and it's like sex workers and babes just drinking water and sharing it because I'm all about hydration I love that <laughs> um so if you want to do a photo I'd love to feature you yes. obviously yes um <laughs> yes please all all the people please <laughs> send me your photos um but I love I also love peeing outdoors. Like that video that I did wasn't just because like, oh, let me try this. It's also because like, I I am an exhibitionist in the way that I, I'm an ecosexual. So actually my first podcast interview that I ever did before I became the co-host of that podcast um, on Candy Girl, they interviewed me about my ecosexuality. Now that is a niche that I have not really found anybody to want to purchase anything of really like it's not a very well-known niche yeah, um and eco rid of it. yeah so ecosexuality is loving the earth and the earth loving you basically so i love being outdoors i love feeling the wind on my skin i love using plants to <laughs> masturbate with or to be able to like touch on my skin really oh i'm getting goosebumps just doing that <laughs> um <laughs> Oh, I feel so good. Um, but I love gentle. Cons it's like ultimate consent, too, because like I don't I think the earth has already given me her consent, but um, it's not like I have to worry about a person touching me in the wrong way or I, you know, trigger warning. I am a victim of sexual assault from my childhood. So that's also probably why I have vaginismus and why I have certain things I have today and why I love the kinks and passion that I do. Mm -hmm. um, so all these things have really geared me into creating this content and just wanting to be outdoors. And I, I just... I'm like way hornier outdoors. I'm way more excited. I I feel the wind. I feel the sun on my body. Like I love that kind of stuff for sure. Um, and the way that I can share it is by sharing it to these different niche categories that I know I can sell to at, at least right now. Because there is no ecosexual category literally anywhere, no Pornhub, no wow. mini vids anywhere. I mean, you if you've never heard about it, yeah. you know, it's, it's definitely not talked about a lot. And it's definitely, I, I don't make a lot of content because not a lot of people want to see it. But if I could, mm. more of the time I would. If I could just like yeah. frolic in like a, in a field naked and sell that, like I would be so happy. <laughs> happy. <laughs> um, <laughs> But, wow. you know, uh, but uh, I am really happy with where I am right now. Um, mm -hmm. Actually, with P, let me show you. Um, <laughs> hello, my hairy armpit. So I just had some <laughs> stickers made. My best Ooh. friend is an illustrator. I don't know if you can see it very oh, well. But it's yeah. a little holographic sticker of me on a toilet. And I actually have 
it as a yes. sweater too. That's amazing. I'm, it's so cute. I'm on a little pink toilet and even my thong has a little cactus print on it because I'm cactus. That's it's so, so cute. Amazing. I am obsessed. I love it. <laughs> Yeah. Oh so God. I'm just like, you know what, if this is what I'm going to do, just have fun with it, own it, mm-hmm. make it my own. And that's kind of how I'm trying to also approach this whole media thing. Yeah, It's like, I'm trying to make it my own. I'm just trying to show that I am happy that I'm, I'm not ashamed of what I'm doing. Although there's constantly moments where I'm like, is this what I really want for myself? Do I really want to be known as a pea queen? Is this the life path that I wanted? Because pea, my fans are going to be kind of sad when they hear this, but it's not really like my kink. There's (laughs) definitely times where I have enjoyed peeing and I've definitely been turned on while peeing. I've incorporated it during sex sometimes but it's not like something that when I watch somebody else do it I get turned on right um it's more like a personal experience for myself and then if I get turned on then I can kind of play with that yeah um but it's been a way for me to it's been hard for me to see like is this really what I want to do but you know what I hmm As a kid, I always wanted to be famous. I was an actress. I was doing all these things. I was like, yes, get in the public eye any way you can. And sometimes press, all press is good press, you know? So this kind of thing that's happening right now, that's been showing like uh, OnlyFans model sells her pee, blah, 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 blah. Like it's definitely not what I thought I would be in the news for. (laughs) And so spread around, but you know what? this is my bathtub water moment this is my fart in a jar moment this is every if they if people knew what sex workers if that we sell fingernails and uh you know like Mm. bush trimmings and sweat and squirt and uh lollipops that have been up people's orifices which i don't recommend putting it up your pussy for your ph balance yeah, I but i've seen people do like put things up there and sell it so it's like this it was a sensational piece yeah. you know people just love to hear about it but if they really knew that this was like way more normal than they ever knew i i don't think that it would have been as sensational or made me feel as ashamed yeah because I still do have those feelings totally because people are commenting and uh I mean this has been spread around to maybe I should talk about what the article is first. yeah like what, I was gonna say, like before we get into it like let, let's talk about what the article was and what exactly happened and what those outcomes were and what you're der- currently fixing and trying to face right now because yeah. I know, but the audience doesn't, audience doesn't know yet. So <laughs> I know. I was just like, yeah, totally. Let's just talk about it without actually talking about the real thing. So um, <laughs> what happened is I interviewed for the Daily Star. Uh, one of my friends said that they had a connect and they were looking for somebody to talk about like selling things like sex workers selling uh, odd things like clippings and trimmings and whatever. Mm -hmm. So I was like, yeah, me, cool. I'm excited. And I thought this was going to be like an article that like multiple people were going to be in. But (laughs) so she wrote it. She got all my information. A couple days later, it was out. And I realized the whole article was about me. And the worst part about it, though, was it said OnlyFans model sells cups of her pee uh, for 52 pounds. So that part, it took me, like, I had to reread it a couple times to be like, oh, wait, fuck. It says OnlyFans on it. Yeah. And you probably know that pee is not allowed on OnlyFans. Most people, yeah. people. A lot of things are not allowed. No, a lot mm-hmm. of things are not allowed on OnlyFans. And I had already had two violation, like, strikes. And they're like, if you get one more, you're going to lose your account. Um, so one of them was from way in the beginning before the pandemic even started and then one was like kind of recently when I tried to be sneaky when I had a viral TikTok video and it sucks because everybody knows about OnlyFans they don't know about other sites so you can make significantly more money on OnlyFans but they don't allow a lot of that so I was trying to be sneaky that last time but this time I didn't do anything wrong 
just the article said that I sell stuff on OnlyFans because it was a keyword. Like, yeah, that's why. Word. Exactly. Everybody knows OnlyFans. They don't know, like, oh, this girl sells cups of her pee on mini vids and through, like, they're not going to say that. So unfortunately, like, this is one of the reasons that I wanted to make my YouTube video and to do this is because, because of the misinformation that people have outside of the sex work industry, something so seemingly like a, just a small mistake can, I lost both of my in OnlyFans accounts um, right. the day it came out like a couple hours later. <laughs> so it, awful. yeah. So only fans was like, Oh, I saw what you did Bye. but they, so I, I emailed them multiple times asking like, so why did I get deleted? What happened? Cause I wanted them to like outright say it obviously, Yeah. but they kept kind of dodging around. So the first time the, the first email they said was your accounts have been deleted. It was like a sentence to both of my pre paid and free. Um, on paid, I had over 120 fans. And then on my free, I had over four and a half thousand fans. So I lost almost 5,000 fans overnight. And then, so I was like, why did you delete it? And they're like, well, clearly stated in our email before, which I said was just a sentence about banning me or, uh, you know, Leading my accounts. Your account. Yeah. They're like, oh, well, clearly we told you, but if you need to know again, it was urination. So I was like, okay, but like, what on my profile was urination for you to delete me? Because there wasn't anything. The only thing I really had was um, because so many people have been asking me for pee on OnlyFans because of my viral pee videos and like that's what I'm known for, I had to start making a graphic like to send people to be like, we can't talk about this here. Please yeah. go to my other sites. Like e people would even like spell out P, which can get you in trouble. Yes. So I, I mean, I already kind of felt like I was on the verge, but I was just really hoping I wouldn't because I was making a third to half of my income on OnlyFans. And I was trying so hard just to push everything else except for my P content. So anyways, uh, they finally said, because your accounts are permanently deleted, we cannot tell you why we deleted your account or what the information or what you had posted on there that was against the terms of service. Oh, so God. they also, they were like, well, you can create a new account if you would like <laughs> to uh, with your same username, but guess that, okay, so... I, I was trying to be like, I'm not going to join OnlyFans again. Fuck them. And then I realized I can't upload any content that I make with other content creators who aren't on other platforms because yeah, you have to tag each other, like compliance codes, all this kind of stuff. So, or they'd all have to send in the contracts and IDs for everything that we do. I was just like, okay, fine. You know what? I'll make another OnlyFans. I'll be that, you know, I'll crawl back to them. I'll give them my money again. And then I tried to get my email and my original name back. And it's like, sorry, those don't, you can't have those. So no. I emailed, I know. So oh I, I emailed OnlyFans. And of course, they were very quick to reply to me about the situation when they deleted my account. But now I've been waiting like three days and I haven't heard back from them. That's more like OnlyFans. They're more like, I'll take a couple days to get back to you. Their customer service sucks. Yes. <laughs> you know. Oh, we all know <laughs> even the people not creators but the people who are paying for the content also know that the support is just off I think there was like last year it came out that there was like 11 people working in OnlyFans support and the amount of people there's like thousands hundreds of thousands of us on that <laughs> it's are you ridiculous mm -hmm. I, I can kind of believe it though I can kind of like if they're taking if they're so terrible and then like the things that they message us are like half-assed it's like you clearly don't have the time or care about me yeah. and here's the other thing like OnlyFans does not care about sex workers they no, don't. on their Twitter and you've probably seen this they only promote celebrities they only promote people who are doing like fitness and, you know, sharing different types of content that isn't nudity. 
they don't want to be known as the nudity, although we are 90% of like their income. I don't know if that's the real yes. number, but there's like, everybody knows OnlyFans as porn. They don't yeah. know it as, oh yeah, did you see Nikki or Cardi B's or Nikki, Man <laughs> you know, like, I don't know who's on there, but it's like, did you see their behind the scenes video of their music video? It's like, yeah. nobody gives no. a shit about that. So no. this has just been a whirlwind and also currently like I my lease is renewing and I need to show that I have enough income but because I just lost half to a third of it I'm really concerned yeah. I'm trying to get people onto my other platforms but it's not like a you sex work is not easy money no. and people in this industry know that but people outside of it always think like Oh, like even on the articles, they're saying like, oh, this girl makes a fortune or her fortune selling cups of her pee. And I'm like, I maybe sell like one to two cups a month. So <laughs> $70 each, that's not a lot. Yeah. And <laughs> the rest of the work I do, I it's people think that porn is free. So they don't really pay for it unless they're really in, you know, whatever. It's yeah. a whole thing. Oh my gosh. Ugh. So going back to the article, it's just been a crazy chaotic couple weeks um, of me trying to figure out where to get my income from, yeah. how to be able to afford things again. And then I'm also working like I was already working really hard, but now I'm working twice as hard. I had yeah. two 14 hour weekends uh, or 14 hour days this weekend. Oh and I've just been camming making content, doing customs, all these kind of things just to be able to make money. And I'm still kind of scraping by. So, oh um, yeah, we're trying our best, and best. I, but I, I'm going to be honest and say that this has really taken a hit in my financial stability and, uh, mental stability <laughs> because when you don't have your basic needs met, AKA finances, um, it kind of really wrecks with everything else. So, totally. yeah. Oh so we're on a we're trying to get back. Yeah, we're trying to get back to that, but it's it's slow. Um, but yeah, I'm really thankful for the people who have moved to my new sites, who have mm. tried to still support me, who voted me for me in the smile contest on mini vids, which was happening at the same time as all of this. Oh, um, oh god. Yeah. Just lots of stuff has been happening, but I'm just, I'm thankful to be here. I'm thankful to be queer. I'm thankful <laughs> to have a place for right now, you know, and supportive friends. Like some of my friends have even sent their people over to give me a tip or to join my site or oh, shared my content. Like stuff like that just means the world. Lot. Sometimes, yeah, I'm sure yeah. you've probably seen it too. Like sometimes sex workers are the most supportive of other sex workers. Oh, I've had yeah. friends make more income off of their sex work friends just for like saying like, Hey, <laughs> I care about you. Here's a little $20. And sometimes their fans do. Yeah. So. Well, first of mm -hmm. all, Cactus, I am so sorry that this happened to you. It is not fun. It is awful what happened to you and things how that was like kind of taken out of context or like even, or even like, misquoted but you didn't even say anything about like only fans so it's like what the fuck and now you're the one who is paying the consequences on it and it's fucking hard when you, like years of your hard work in terms of like trying to build that fan base is gone in the blink of an eye so i commend you in how well or at least how you're presenting how well you're doing um it it's I can't imagine. I just, I really can't imagine. And like just hearing your story from you and having this conversation right here, right now, like is making me emotional because I've had so many other friends that have lost their accounts, uh, Instagram deleted, um, OnlyFans suspended. So it's, it's really fucking hard. And I, I just really want to extend my like sincerest apology that this has happened and this shit needs to stop happening. You know, <laughs> I agree. And I, so something that I didn't uh, touch on of like uh, why P is not allowed is because of 
credit card companies and our, our billing systems, a lot of them don't uh, allow it. And they were trying to, you know, last year OnlyFans yes. was like, buy adult content. And they're like, wait, just wait. You can come back since you hate Just us. Just kidding. <laughs> Just kidding. But I think a lot of that, it was pressure from MasterCard because MasterCard also stopped with Model Hub and Pornhub and a lot of different things. There's a lot of content that people are very ashamed that is on the internet and they don't want people to make money off of doing certain things, even though it's not illegal. But they are trying to that and bills like FOSTA SESTA and all that kind of stuff are the reasons why this is happening. Like squirt is allowed on OnlyFans, but pee is not. So mm -hmm. I guess if I peed and I said it's squirt and I pretended to have an orgasm that it would be fine, but that's not me and yeah. that's not what I want to do. And I don't want to always have to hide behind something. Yeah. Um, but on like this, like you said, this hasn't happened to just me. Like yeah. this is, I am just one person who has lost their account or, you know, like you said, people lose their Instagrams, we're shadow banned, we're deleted, we're suspended uh, on TikTok. Every single platform you can think of, we have been pushed out. But yet celebrities can have nipples totally out yeah. and uh, be totally fine and get no repercussions and their photos are still up on Instagram while we who are trying to make a profit of it because, oh, technically oh, we're not art, we're just porn, even though I consider what I do art. Yeah, for sure. Right? Illustrations, sure, you can have people fucking on illustrations, but God forbid you see half of a nipple or a side boob or oh a little God. bit of my, I've actually been, I've had posts deleted because of my bush before. The, not because of anything, just because my bush is showing out of my panties. Oh my God. Mm -hmm. Yeah. This is so infuriating. So it really is. It's a war on sex workers and we are resilient and we're fighting and we're trying to find ways to be able to, it, we have to use the tools that we have. I mean, and that's why like I, as much as I hate to say that I'm like crawling back to OnlyFans, like you got to use what the world is giving you to be able to create income and to support yourself. And as much as I want to say, fuck you, I also want to be like, Hi, fans. I miss you. Sorry for losing you all. And also, I would I, I have nowhere to share this content now. I, I, I love taking nudes. And <laughs> I love I'm doing modeling. Like I've been taking up so much modeling recently. And then as soon as I've been doing that, I lost my only fans. Mm. I do have other places I could share it. But Fansly, people are on there for pee. Mini vids, people are on there for like everything is for a certain experience. And OnlyFans is the place where people like to go see nudes. So, um, you know, I'm working on it. I'm trying to get back if they'll let me. Yeah. <laughs> you know, if they'll reply to my email. Yeah, um, fingers crossed. But fingers, fingers fucking crossed. Yeah. But I, uh, I am like I said, I couldn't have gotten through this without the support of everybody in the industry. Um, and hopefully I can share my story more. Mm -hmm. Honestly, I was actually, I had paid somebody to do some PR for me and they dropped the ball and haven't talked to me since it happened. Oh my God. Uh, yeah. so I've not only lost money on that, but they were supposed to get me into like tabloids and stuff and mm -hmm. help me be able to combat this. And now it's been two to three weeks since I've lost my account and I've been waiting to not make money because this person told me to wait. And they still haven't messaged me back. So really, really unfortunate about that. Yeah. So, um. <laughs> Jesus. Well, everyone go and subscribe to Cactus Cutie on OnlyFans right now. The links are in the show notes. Please help her out. Thank you very much. Like, this is just Thank breaking you. my heart. <laughs> really just breaking my heart. Well, I'm, I'm really appreciative that I get to be able to share this story and that I get to talk to somebody who is not judging me for, you know, because like, I, I feel like the, I, if I were to do a, I lost my OnlyFans account because of this kind of article, 
which I still want to do. I feel like I'm going to get these comments like, boo-hoo, OnlyFans girl loses her OnlyFans, <laughs> bug, go get a real job kind of stuff. Yeah, they think- but they don't realize that I've been, this is my real job. I was on OnlyFans for, since 2018, since two years before the d- pandemic. Yeah. Um, I had built up thousands and thousands and thousands of media and expertise and I was even making money off of referrals of people that I had referred to the site to yeah. so not only was I losing my own income I was losing referral income uh, I was helping people with their pages um like th- this is just more than just like losing my you know like an account where I can share photos whatever this easily. was a lot of my time and energy and something I really love doing and something that pays my bills. Yeah. So yeah, um, I'm just optimistic to be able to get back. And um, hopefully, I'm just going to be peeing all over the world and, <laughs> you know, making money. Totally. <laughs> oh my gosh, like, you can only go up from here, right? So I'm really just sending out all the positive vibes your way, all the money making vibes your way. And hopefully this episode will help as well. And there's again, there's so many different people listening to the show. So might get some new fans from there. So fingers crossed. <laughs> but moving on to more happier topics. Oh, my God. <laughs> um, I know um, I do want to just kind of go a little bit for anyone who's wanting to kind of get into this content and trying to get into this fetish. Um, can you tell us a little bit about prep work in terms of like how much liquid I see this like for those who are not watching because it's only available on Patreon um Cactus is drinking this ginormous water bottle that's making me want to pee and <laughs> it's huge and I, I know a lot of people are going to ask like how much liquid do you have to drink is it specific blah 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 so if you want to briefly go into that feel free to you're in for a treat uh, so I have, um, I have, it depends on the kind of video that I'm prepping for. Uh, there's only a few times a month and I actually said this in the article cause I feel like the fart girl, uh, I'm giving her all love by the way, no shame to the, to the girl who sells her farts, in, but she, um, was starting to eat a diet that was pretty unhealthy because she was trying to create a lot of gas for herself and ended up in the hospital. Oh yeah. So And I've heard a lot of things about holding your pee, how it's not good for you. So I know that there is a fetish for that. And I love kind of like catering to the desperation of having to pee. And I also am known for peeing for a very long time. So um, there is definitely like a build up. Like I drink, um, if it's a very long video that I'm preparing for, like a big custom video where somebody really wants to see me pee forever and so something or whatever i'll probably i have a giant cup like a teacup too that's about this big i'll drink two of those and then i'll sip on this and then about like two two and a half hours later where it's like really like you're on the edge of really having to pee i'm like okay here we go um (laughs) yeah so i i i've my most recent video was about nine minutes of me peeing my pants Wow. Yeah. Uh, so I can pee for a very long time. <laughs> and it's like, con- like, not super constant. I do different angles. I show, um, I mean, I'm not moving the camera around a lot, mm-hmm. but I'm moving myself so they can see the front side, the back side, they can see the, the water dripping, I kind of squeeze things out so they could see wow. how soft I am. Um, But uh, what I really love to do, um, and I was talking about this earlier, are my compilation videos where on my Snapchat, I just film just at least one pee a day. Sometimes it's every other day if I'm not feeling like it, but that's rare. But I, I pee a bunch anyways. It's like if I'm at home, if I'm out, I love peeing out when I'm out and about because then it's like you get to see a different scenery where I am you get to hear different things it's a different experience different toilets (laughs) you know um going on road trips I recently did a couple road trip videos where I just every pee I did and you know I can pee I can drink a lot of water and I can pee a lot so there was like at least like six to eight different pees on my last road trip so those come become videos too so um yeah, it's oh my God. the prep work is more just like if I have to pee, I'll pee. Um, except if it's like a very like a 
a custom video or something that I'm really putting a lot of time and effort into, I just, I like to stay hydrated. And I think it's very important to stay hydrated. <laughs> very important to stay hydrated. Absolutely. And like, just hearing you talk about this and seeing your face light up, like it just shows me how passionate and how like how much joy it brings you like you genuinely love creating this content and like yeah like I don't see you faking any of this stuff at all like this is pure authenticity (laughs) authenticity and I was like trying to think of like how am I gonna make this into like a pee pun that's the fun thing is I get to like I get to make so many different pee puns I actually have a list of ones that I want to use for like titles for uh (laughs) videos I want to make or you know something that I just want to add in as a joke or something but there are so many ways that you can make pee puns like who doesn't love something that you could just be fun and silly with (laughs) <laughs> I don't like being serious. Who likes to be? Well, people like to be serious. I don't. <laughs> <laughs> well, there's a bunch of questions that came in from the audience and you are free to answer them. You're free to skip any of them and we'll just kind of bang them out. So why don't we kind of switch gears and hop into that section of the podcast? So let's the- bang them out. Let's check them out. So I know you do like a lot of solo content, but, um, this person is asking, my lady would like me to do this with her. Any thoughts on how to make it sexy and erotic? 100%. Okay. So actually, I just got out of a relationship. And then my previous relationship, both of those, um, I had made content with my partners. So I really loved doing that. Um, So is this a question about comfortability or how to make money or to... I think it's up to however you want to interpret it. Um, I don't think it... I think this one came from a civilian, actually. Okay. Non-sex work. So yes. Cool. So if you just want to make like a little sex tape for yourself and feel comfortable, I'd say like just do it in a place that... Well, actually, you know what I like to do is I like to film it spontaneously. Like, I don't like to have a plan. I'm like, ooh, this looks really good. You know what? Maybe we should film this part of it, you know? So, like, get your camera out. Get your phone out. Like, you only need your phone anyways now. Like, who needs a camera for this kind of stuff? All of my content is filmed. I'm a photographer, and I film, like, 99.9% of my stuff on my phone. (laughs) So, just whip it out. Like, if you feel like your booty looks really good riding on top of somebody or if you feel like it's a really good angle from where you are and you just kind of want to document that that it's kind of like a um take little clips don't try to do a whole thing I feel like trying to do a whole sex tape at once is very daunting and it's a lot of work and it's a lot of emotional pressure to be able to stay hard stay in it stay emotionally part of it But I honestly, I love creating content with partners and I do miss Mm -hmm. having a partner to do that. Um, Hopefully my next one will love to create content with me too. Um, But it's all about your talk to each other. That's also the big thing. Ask each other questions. Ask each other, do you like this? Do you want to do this? Is this comfortable for you? How can I make this better? Do you like this Mm -hmm. angle that I just shot? Like there's ask questions and then also express how you feel if you're feeling uncomfortable you say it you don't have to wait for somebody to ask you I think communication is the biggest thing in um creating not even just creating content but with just being with somebody totally 100 Mm percent agree with you and all friends and like yeah like when you're trying to film yourself and with your partner There's a lot of like unnecessary pressure with that too. So don't put too much pressure on yourself. Just have fun with it. As you said, be comfortable. And yeah, don't try to feel like I need to film the whole thing and all the stuff. Like just, I don't know. I would set up the camera somewhere like really discreet. And that's just how I do it. Like putting it really discreet. So it feels like I'm not really working. Because sometimes when I feel like I need to do this video – there's so much pressure there and I just like maybe I'll get nervous or there's pressure for all my partner to perform and stuff too. So just take it one step at a time. <laughs> I guess the next question is, um, do you like hugs? Oh, 
Yes, that is the most <laughs> wholesome question. Oh, my heart. I do. And so like when I see my friends like having a hard day, I'll actually like comment back like hugs. I wish I could give you a hug right now because, you know, like I feel like intimacy and physical intimacy are things, especially as friends and people who aren't romantically involved. I feel like there's a a distance and I definitely have that. So maybe that's why I'm more adamant about trying to be comfortable with that. Um, but yes, I love hugs. I do. I feel like there's something about um, heart to heart, breath to breath kind of thing and just being in somebody's space and feeling comfortable. Um, I don't yes. like hugs from everybody, obviously, but I love hugs from people yeah. that I like and who respect me and <laughs> don't seem like they're wanting a hug for other reasons. Yes, right. Mm -hmm. Good answer. And also a great question, too. I was I like, this that. is just the, per the perfect person for that question. <laughs> okay. So next question is, have you done any role playing? And this person wrote, like, pretending you are stung by a jellyfish. <laughs> that – when I think of role play, I don't think of being stung by a jellyfish, but I love that person's uh, imagination. I, um, so, you know, I don't do a lot of, it's really weird because I'm an, I call myself an actress, but I don't really like to act in sex as much. Sometimes I feel I don't have sex very, very often because like I have vaginismus, but I love sharing intimacy. So if anything, I'd be more like down to do role play. I have suggested it to partners, but maybe it's because they're not as into it either. But like, let's go to a bar and pretend that we don't know each other and pick each other up and stuff like that. <laughs> I definitely have like more mild role play. I'm more of a person who really loves human to human contact, like hugs, intimacy, kissing. And I feel like when I'm playing somebody else, sometimes I'm cactus, you know, like, but that's a person who I feel very connected to. But when I'm playing like a, a person stung by a jellyfish, oh, I get it because getting peed on. Yeah. yeah. I get it. <laughs> okay. That's so cute. I don't really do role play in pee is often either it's more just like me being me and I love you know I'm actually I love being an exhibitionist I love people watching me just be me just yeah um I'm trying to think like you know like all oh, if if I were in like the 90s and cam were first a thing I feel like I would have been maybe one of those people who had a camera in their room where you just watch me all day and I'm just like hanging out yes. and I love being watched. Um, so there's definitely maybe like something about that what I would play into. But as for like firefighter, pl plumber yeah. kind of stuff, I'm not super into that. I don't really like dressing up in those. I like dressing up in things that make me feel beautiful that are part of my, my character, not creating a different character. Gotcha. Yeah. No, that's great. And like you're not, there's no right or wrong answer for that. So you can, it's whatever floats your boat, literally. So. Whatever stings <laughs> my leg. <laughs> <laughs> um, the next one is, is pee safe to drink? If it's more yellow, does that affect its drinkability? Great question. Pee is safe to drink. I've done actually, don't tell my websites, but I do have uh, pee drinking videos. A lot of, so oh. pee... Um, I don't have a lot, but I do have some, but, um, pee drinking just in the side of sex work is not allowed on a lot of sites. You can pee, right. you can pee on people, kind of not really only on some sites, but pee drinking, anything that like is sharing it or ingesting it is not allowed, but that does not mean that it's not healthy. Mm -hmm. doesn't mean that you can't do it. I know people, I mean, like Bear Grylls, I, <laughs> I, I've heard of this because I'm in the <laughs> pee community, but, um, uh, the the guy who does like the survivor type stuff where he goes out in the middle of nowhere he drank his pee because he needed some hydration like if he can do it and he thinks it's healthy i don't see anything wrong with it don't do it all the time obviously yeah. uh in my article the article was um 
uh, OnlyFans model sells cups of her pee. A customer even made an ice lolly out of it. So somebody sent me a photo oh, of yeah, them. They made it into a popsicle and like had it on like a little popsicle stick and everything. Um, I don't um, sell cups of pee for people just to like look at and smell. Like whatever they want to do, they can do it. Um, as for the color, yeah. I don't. I don't think color has anything to do with it. I think if you're concerned about your color, just drink more water. <laughs> like that's really it. Or don't drink coffee. Like if you want it to be a pleasurable experience, at least for me, I don't like coffee. Some people like coffee pee. Um, but just be conscious of what you put in your body. And that's really it. If you're eating unhealthy, you're going to be releasing more unhealthy things. If you put healthy things into your body, it's going to be yeah. more healthy. 100%. That goes for um, like semen as well. That can also like food, whatever you're putting it into your body can also affect the taste and all that stuff too. So it's similar bodily fluids, right? Cool. Um, does Do people who eat asparagus worry you? <laughs> Oh, they worry me so much. No, like I said, the coffee thing. I used to, uh, one of my partners used to drink a lot of coffee, so whenever we did pee content, I was like not the most attracted by the smell. Um, mm -hmm. But that's my personal preference. Uh, some, like I said, some people, if there's something out there, somebody's gonna want it. So some people love asparagus pee. I'm sure, and I'm sure maybe if I did a video where I like ate asparagus and then I peed and I talked about the smell, I'm sure that would sell. Actually, I'll oh, write that sure. down. Uh, <laughs> yeah, you're welcome. Uh, thanks, whoever uh, asked this question. But uh, <laughs> like you know, there's something for everybody, and everybody has their own attractiveness or um, what they're turned on by, and Everybody has their own personal preferences. But as long as, like you said, as long as we're being healthy, I think we're good. Yeah, I agree with that. And um, <laughs> it's just really – I knew, like, the, the asparagus, like, comment was going to come up at some point. Um, going back to sites. So how do you navigate fan sites, terms and conditions, or terms and services? Womp. Uh, this is this this one sucks. Um, you don't. You do, but you don't. Uh, I mean, on every website, they have their own terms of service. On Fansly, I love it because I can smoke, I can pee, I can sell my panties, I can do all these different kind of things that are so against the rules on OnlyFans. Um, so at least you know there's ways that you can navigate it on different websites. Um, on OnlyFans. Like I said earlier, when I was trying to get people off of my account, I made a graphic that had some information about where you could find me. And that was like in a DM with, you know, not a file name that had anything like where to find my P content. It was just like screenshot, yeah. you know. Um, so yeah. I tried to make it as discreet, discreet as possible, possible, but you never know. Like you never know if you're going to be... Um, violated for one or, you know, get uh, violations for one thing. And then they find something else. Like one time they found my P content and then they're like, Oh, when you first started this site, you started sharing links of other places too, which they didn't really have a very, um, uh, I guess explicit terms of service back then in 2018. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So then they finally found it. They had me take all my things down. And so it's always changing on these sites for sure, <laughs> but you just kind of have to learn how to be sneaky. And for like TikTok, you have to be like my fan. You can't even say fan site anymore. Like you've got to say, mm -hmm. even for PH, people will do like a, a orange box and a white box now. Like you're trying to show that it's like, hey, check me out on this website, but you can't say it. So yeah. that's also yeah. why it's so hard. I can't just be like, hey, I lost my OnlyFans. Come join my other website. Like, I can't just explicitly say that. Um, the only place yeah. I really can is Twitter. And from what I've heard yeah. through the grapevine, Twitter is probably not going to be allowing adult content soon. So yeah. I'm trying to live it up for as much as I've got. But that's why I have this uh, website being built. And part of it, um, which I'm really thankful, is an email service mm -hmm. 
that I can start emailing my people and telling them about yeah. stuff, which I'm probably going to go craft my first email today. So that's exciting. So if you're on my email list, you'll get it, uh, which you can go through and join on cactuscutie.com. Um, but yeah, uh, terms of service are very hard to get around now. And it's just, oh, we share it with, in these communities, we share it with each other. So in my hairy communities and my pea communities and whatever, we just try to tell each other, oh, I was able to get away with this or, oh no, this is the new rule. How are we going to get around this together? Um, right. Yeah. There's a lot. Um, there's a lot. Yeah. And it's really, really tricky, really, really hard. So just got to be sneaky, be discreet about it and just be careful because you can risk your account getting suspended, taken away or banned. So tread with caution, peoples. Um, the last question here, because I know I've kept you a little bit longer, <laughs> um, but how do you deal with the post office and mailing your P items out? Shh, don't tell them I do it. Shh. <laughs> I was gonna say. Um, yeah, like I don't do it to anybody outside of the United States. Um, I tried to once and then I had to fill out a customs form and I got very nervous and I said that I was shipping a cup of glitter. So sometimes if anything, I just say I'm like shipping a cup of glitter or, you know, because I feel okay, so you can't ship liquids or anything. So what I do is I fill the cup literally all the way to the top. So there's no sloshing around. Mm -hmm. You can't kind of have a feel that there's liquid in it. Um, so when the people get the cup, they get it straight to the top, um, which is lucky for you. But um, <laughs> it's, it's I, I'm discreet. I have a PO box. Um, so if it does get lost, at least it kind of gets shipped back to me. Um, and thankfully with USPS, um, legally they can't go through their stuff, your stuff without a warrant. So that's kind of right. why I do everything through USPS instead of UPS or FedEx or any of those. Um, yes. So it's definitely, it's very discreet. As most of this job is, you kind of just have to say that you're doing something else when you're actually doing yeah. the quote unquote wrong things. Yes, yes, totally. And yeah, I guess with P is a little bit different, but if anyone's interested in hearing another episode in terms of like selling like used mm. panties and stuff like that, listen to the episode with the panty selling podcast with Dalma Rosa. I did an episode with her last season and she goes very into detail about stuff that you are shipping out that, you know, might not be nice when they open and stuff like that. So yes, but discreet is very, very, very key to mailing out any kind of wares and um, other items. So, <laughs> but this is a good way to end the show. I can't believe we were already here. Like this has been a really eye-opening episode. Thank you so much, Cactus, for sharing your story. I am so honored that you were able to share it with me. So um, I'm just hoping that we can get and build up your fan base even more and just help you get back to where you were and just keep on doing your outdoor pee things and being you. Cause I, I love this energy. It's so, so refreshing and so great. So, but before I let you go, where can we all find you? I just want to say thank you so much. Your words meant like, oh, my little warm, fuzzy heart. It's just tingling right now. So thank you so much. And like I said, I wouldn't be as happy or beautiful or whatever without support of people in this community. And so I'm very thankful for you. And I hope we can build your brand up too, because this is a lovely podcast. Um, I listened to quite a few episodes before I got on. And now I'm going to have to listen to that uh, panties one. So I, I'm one. thankful for people who have podcasts like this, because um there's definitely more information that we need to share, not just cute nudes. But <laughs> if you want to see the cute nudes, um, you can go to cactuscutie.com. My name is spelled with two Ks. Um, I am on Instagram, cactus.cutie, Twitter, cactuscutie, TikTok, cactus.cutie, and cactus.flower. Uh, my fans leaves, and pretty much just look up Cactus Cutie. You're also, the <laughs> top results are probably going to be my Twitter and a lot of the articles. That article not only was picked up by that one, it got picked up by The Sun, and then now it's just everywhere. So if you want to read the article, just type in Cactus Cutie on Google and you'll find it. 
It'll be a fun. Yeah, <laughs> but um, I would, if you uh, find me from this podcast, let me know and I'll give you a little extra something something for being so wonderful. <laughs> and you too, Sia, if you want to trade uh, links or whatever, I'd be happy to support your content too. Thank you so much. That means so much to me. Like, this has been such a great, great episode. I cannot wait to air this. And uh, for everyone else listening at home, it's Strip by Sia on all podcast platforms. You can find me everywhere. So don't forget to like, rate, share, review, and subscribe if you haven't rated five stars. Or, I mean, just give your honest opinion. I'm not, I won't be offended if you don't give me five stars. But five stars is great because that helps people find the show. Um, and also, if you haven't uh, subscribed to Patreon yet, it's patreon.com slash strip by Sia. You'll be able to see this whole video on there exclusively on Patreon, nowhere else. So be sure to to take a look because it's pretty funny and amazing and great to see in person. And um, yeah, that's it for this week. So And they get to see my uh, toilet paper ear or toilet paper earrings. Yes. Yes. So if you want to see those, follow her Patreon. (laughs) Yes. Subscribe. And we'll catch everyone in for another episode next Sunday. Thank you, Cactus. Thank you. Bye. Bye. You're listening to Stripped by Sia. Hosted, produced, and edited by Steph Sia. Music by Ted D. Graphic design by Maria Bellandarama and photography by Ian Davern.